go to training toolbar. You can raise your hand if you have a question. I'll then unmute you individually, and then uh, you can go through a couple questions um, that you have, and then we'll we'll rotate on to the next person. Um, with this amount of people, let's you know try to at least everyone get uh, two or three questions in, and then uh, of course, if we have time, we'll we'll go back through the list and um, use up as much as we need. But to start us out, does anyone have a, a question that I could answer? All right, Eric, go ahead. Hey, Michael. Um, hey, I got a question. Um, I haven't updated service program in quite some time. Um, I know I was. Uh, you guys worked on a couple fixes for me, and I got it running the way I wanted it to run. And uh, so I figured if it wasn't broke, don't fix it. So uh, I just recently updated it, um, and I'm noticing a couple changes. Obviously, you guys done quite a bit of work to the program. A um, uh, couple questions in specific um, to. Uh -huh. generating invoices on QuickBooks from the service program. Um, you know, how we operate as well, you know, we bill in advance. So what we do is we'll go on to the service program, create our rental ticket, um, post to QuickBooks, um, and traditionally the way it's been, there hasn't been a date range applied to that invoice. So we'll go into QuickBooks and then we'll edit our date range, you know, we'll manually type it in uh, for the date range that we're billing for. Um, and call it good. Well, now it's it's generating a date range for us, but it's you know it's it's weird. It's it's not generating the correct date range. You know, it's actually uh, billing it from today's date till the rental end date. Um, if that makes any sense, um, and it's also right. a location to the invoice, um, whereas before you know it never would add a location to the invoice. Correct. We have changed it so that now when you are on a rental item, if you hit post to QuickBooks, it would mimic how it would if you were to run a billing batch with a location um, and the date range. will take the build through date, yep. and it will the date range would be from this date to the rental end date. If no rental end date is selected, it will go from the build through date to today's date. Okay. Now, um how do I manipulate the the, the beginning? Because it, it automatically it seems like it automatically selects today's date. Um, is there a way for me to? Uh, how do I manipulate that date? That specific the first date that it puts down, which um, typically is today's date. That's what we've been seeing. Is there a, a field that I can manipulate that with? Or because you know you should be able to use the rental start and end date also if you hit post a QuickBooks on that first one to control what that date range will be. Okay, yeah, I tried that, um, you know, because we're entering in, say, a rental for next weekend, or sorry, next week. So, you know, I'll, I've will i changed it to the, the rental start date to be, say, you know, March 3rd through, um, you know, March 30th or whatever it would be. And when I post it to QuickBooks, it's saying today's date through, say, March 30th. Um, so I don't, I don't know if that's not working properly or what. Um, but I have tried entering in a rental start date and a rental end date, and it's been putting today's date on there. Let me see. Are you able to see my screen now? Uh, hang on a second. Yes. So what I am doing on my rental transaction, let's see, I don't, this one's going to be super quick. I don't have the right QuickBooks file for this. Are your, is your billing increment monthly? Yes. So you're seeing the dates being today through the build through date? Yes, sir. So if you're saying that, and what what would
would you need to manipulate for that first date? I mean, if it's starting today, um, what well, date it, would you like to see as that first date? Well, um, if I'm looking at your screen right now, like how we would typically set it up is our delivery date. Um, say that's March 3rd. So if you set that to March 3rd, um, and then let's see, one, two, three, four. That would be the date range would be the delivery date would be March 3rd, and then the build through date would be March 30th. We bill in 28 day um, increments, and we bill in advance. So, um, so yeah, that's correct. That's what you got there? And you, you, you sure you've tried it with this uh, C3 to 330? Yes, sir. When I just hit post the QuickBooks, well, what I'm getting is 3.30. So if I change that possibly to so that's what you would see, 3.30. Um, yeah, actually, that looks correct now. Looks like before it was 3.30 to 3.30, though. So correct. I, that is when I had my build-through date set to 3.30. Um, if you treat your build-through date as the starting date, it will go through this as the starting date of the result, and this is the ending date. And then once you posted it to QuickBooks, you could then adjust this to say, OK, now it has been built through the 30th, and you're fine going forward with batches. I see. OK. so it's. So we'd almost be better off just sticking with what we were doing and then just editing once in QuickBooks with our day range as opposed to, you know, doing it here, posting it to QuickBooks, um, then going back to the service program and changing our day range again. Well, now, I mean, now you would just, you could put in your delivery date 3-3 and then it posts to QuickBooks and you don't even have to go to QuickBooks. Your date range will be correct and then just set your billing date through what you just billed it for, and then you're done. You wouldn't even have to go to QuickBooks. OK, so um, now, OK, when you're putting a rental end date, I see that rental end date that you put there. Um, you know, if it's an ongoing, does that affect anything? Um, if I go beyond, say, March 30, so the customer wants to keep it for longer than the 30th, will that rental no, end date? No, because that'll be, that'll be always managed through the uh, billing batch like it always has. And it, still state the same, what really triggers the close of that rental is the date returned. Okay, gotcha. Um, okay, so I'll have to do a little more uh, troubleshooting with that. Maybe I did it incorrectly or something. I'll do some playing with that. Um, but also, uh, in regards to the posting invoices to QuickBooks, that location field, if we put something in that location now, it's showing up on our QuickBooks invoices, um, and we prefer not to have those showing up. Is there an option to make that, you know, stop? I think under total maintenance 
And I don't know if this is just a factor of batches, but I do have to actually show the location. Um, let's see. Okay. Maybe it's just on the run batches screen. Yeah, right here, the show the location description. Do you have that set to no currently? Yes, I do. That that works for when we're doing a batch, but, you know, when I'm doing individuals, uh, it shows that location, and it shows it after the date range. Yep, I do see it. Folks. We'll do something similar. Um, I'll get with Bill and see if there's uh, something we can do maybe for an option for that to uh, keep the location from just like we do on the batches. Sure. Okay. All right. That's pretty much all I have. Uh, I'm sure there'll be more down the road, but that's okay. good. Not a problem. Go ahead and uh, mute you, Eric. I do uh, appreciate talking to you again. And um, any other questions, just let us know. I'm going to jump on down the uh, list here. The... Gene, did you have a uh, question for us? Yeah, I have, well, two questions. Uh, one, when I ran batch today, because we do a, a full month, but um, for the 30th and the 31st, it prorated it. And so what did I do wrong on that? you have the options? Do you have it set to prorate? Well, yeah, I have it set to prorate, but it's month to month, and so I don't want it to your, charge less for February your, just because February is shorter. Yeah, when you ran billing, you're telling the software if you're running it from the 1st to the 28th. Right. In the billing cycle, if you do a full calendar month billing for the month of February, it's going to be 28th. So we should have changed that to 28th, and that would have done it right then. Correct. Then it would have been shown that, okay, this thing's run out 28 days. It's all the days in February, so it's a full month. If you would have put 30 okay. days in this billing period, and it, you know, and it you're basically billing it from the 20, the 1st to the 28th, it's only going to show 28. That's why it prorated it. Okay. Well, that makes sense there. My other question is I have an actual toilet invoice set up, but it's not pull it was pulling through, and now it's not pulling through to QuickBooks. It's not running it for some reason, and I'm not sure why. You want to stopped. make sure you, you have the offer of the template right here on that transaction. Uh -huh. Selected here. You're, are, you using, are you using billing groups? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for each billing group, if we double click in the billing group field, you can select a template. Oh, okay. That way, you could have multi, maybe different billing groups get different templates. Okay, I got it. So then when you selected it, it will show the template there. Perfect. I will get that corrected then. Thank you. Uh-huh. Uh, Liz, I know you have a question. Um, if you're on the call, do you see where you can enter your audio pin? It should be like uh, you have to hit like pound and maybe a digit or a couple digits and then pound again, and then I can actually unmute you. It won't let me do it. There we go. All right, go right ahead. Um, I wanted to um, ask you what the difference between tasks and route tickets. When do you use those? We're not sure if we're using tasks in the right place or if we should be using route tickets instead. It's a great question. Uh, your industry being, I think you're in kind of the pool industry, uh, the way we have the software set up for our pool customers is tasks are great for managing repair type calls, like service calls where you're going out to, you know, the customer's pump's broken, one-time services. Anything that is done for like weekly cleanings, anything reoccurring, it should be on the route schedule and the guys do a route ticket at those stops. Okay, that makes sense. 
that's why on our optic have using those new mobile devices you have those three groups of fields. Sixty fields, that's where you can set up these fields to hold all your different chemical readings so guys can track it. Oh yeah, okay. <clears throat> um one other thing that we're trying to do um because we're, we're setting up all of our inventory and we're putting it in QuickBooks first. Correct. Mm -hmm. And yep. we have service type of inventory, such as labor. And then we also have retail items like chemicals. So the service type inventory allowed us to make a main category and then subcategories underneath. But for retail or chemical type things, it's not letting us do that. And we didn't know if you have to set the chemicals up under a non-inventory item or a group. I saw the drop-down menu, but <clears throat> some reason... If I make a new item, I'm going to call this a category always, like the... If you want to make like a parent item and then sub-items underneath it, your items always have to match in the type. So if I make the category where you're going to inventory, I'll call it chemicals. Okay. Take an income account here. That should be good. That. Got my name. I want to add items to it. I'm just going to go to new item. And to make it a sub item, I have to make sure it's an, also an inventory report. And I can be a sub item of any other inventory part. So if you're working with non-inventory items, your category name has to be a non-inventory item, and then you can add sub-items to it that are non-inventory parts. Okay. And I have one more quick, real quick question. Is there any way that you can set the sales tax to be defaulted on the invoice instead of choosing yeah. it each time? Uh, sales tax is defaulted for invoices um, as long as it's set up in QuickBooks. Okay. So if you go to customers and if we set up any customer in QuickBooks, you need to go to tax settings, and you need to tell the customer that or tell QuickBooks that the customer is taxable, and what tax item or what percentage. You charge that customer. That way, every time you do an invoice for that customer in the future, it'll always charge. It'll default to the QuickBooks preference here. Gotcha. So we have to do that per customer. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I don't want to monopolize you, but under one real last thing, under uh, on the service program, when you got that, you were we were watching a how-to video the other day on Sket. You hit the uh, where you could schedule. You can view the schedule. Uh, mm -hmm. There's names that keep popping up that we've never entered as employees. And I know that's maybe a very small little thing. Yes, exactly, right there. These names. Yep, you're, you have to set your employees' names when you first do the calendar. So if you hit employees, then you pick and choose by holding control which okay. employees you want to see. And when you hit save and close, you'll never see those other things again. Go off of your employees. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I know that was a silly. No question. worries. <laughs> no, good question. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. No problem. Can you go right ahead. Hey, Mike. I'm sorry. I'm still having a hard time hearing you this afternoon. Did you ask us for questions? Um, I wanted to, I need to start working on templates and I wanted to watch the videos, the training videos before so I could ask you questions during this class and I didn't get a chance. So I don't want to waste your time having you show me any of that. I'll watch the videos first, but I was wondering, I had sent you an email a couple days ago. You were working on a template for us and was wondering if you got that email and if you have that template, if I could get it from you. Yeah, I'll send it to you right now. 
perfect. And then I'll watch the video before I start asking you template questions. Um, okay. I've got some, just some real quick ones, I think. Uh huh. If uh, one of the things, if I get a bigger monitor, I want to be able to see the whole screen. Will I just see a bigger picture of what I have now and I will still have to scroll back and forth? Or if I get a bigger monitor, will I not have to scroll up and down and back and forth still? Um, kind of a double-edged question. Uh, it's dependent on the size of your monitor and the video card really uh, inside the computer. Um, and what is really controlling it are your screen resolutions. Okay. So right now, like my monitor that we're on is 6 by 900, the 900 width, and that's kind of given me almost to the printed column. If I were to increase that a little bit, I'm going to start to use time and time. That does shrink down the view. I mean, everything looks a little smaller on a computer, but you can fit more on the screen. Okay. That's what we're trying to do. I'm, I'm working on the repair guys now and tasks and working with their, having them work on their phones. And on my computer, I wanted to see that column that said complete, you know, yes or no. So that's why I was asking. Mm -hmm. When they hit complete on their telephone on a task, will it take it off that calendar view, or will it still be on there? It'll still stay on the schedule from the desktop until you either invoice it or post it to notes. Okay. One of the things we were doing before is we'd come up with like a system where we would have them change the sub-assigned um, to like complete, so then it came off the calendar, so I could quickly look at the calendar and see how they were doing that day, or just see what was scheduled and what was on the calendar. And now with the new phone system, I guess they can't—they don't have access to sub-assigned on their phone. If they, does. correct. If they change the assigned to, that will change it. You know, it changed it for the, both of them in the field. So I mean, the the best way they can do it is just. Market is complete, and then you can see throughout the day periodically how they're doing by just filtering on that completed per year. Okay. So did we? I think we used to be able to change the sub assigned on our phone, and we can't now. Right. Is there is there a reason you did that, or is uh, there? A... No, nope, it's just uh, right now we're just operating off the one uh, field uh, for the guys in the field. Okay. Um. When we get a sign, we send quotes to customers and they sign them and fax them back to us or email them back, maybe not you know, through our system here, not through the service program. So we scan them and if I, you know, now the QuickBooks 2013, I can actually attach that to a customer once we scan it. Is that going to make the file too big that I'm going to have problems? I have into it constantly telling me my file's too big, I need to sign up for this gazillion dollar service they have, and I've had Bill tell me it doesn't matter. It's fine how it is. Correct. Yeah, you do not. Uh, file attachments will not uh, take up space uh, in your, your company file. That the company file is pretty much comprised of just the data, the customer information itself, uh, items, the transactions. Uh, the what it's basically doing is what our software does, just kind of put a link to that document on your computer. Okay, so it shouldn't affect that size. Okay. Um, is there a place, I noticed uh, Eileen's been sick this week, so I've been doing a lot of stuff and I'm coming up with a lot of questions on what she's been doing and what's going on with how we're doing things. When I enter in um, a, a quote on the service program, I see there's a place where I can put in the cost of an item. If I select an item, I can put the cost in and then the markup, 100%, 50% or whatever. Does that not save in the system anywhere? If I enter that item again, do I have to start over? The cost is supposed to be derived from QuickBooks. So where in QuickBooks, I guess, I looked, and I don't know if I'm looking in the right place. I didn't see a place to put the cost in at QuickBooks. It's service, I'm not a cost. So that's probably the problem is all your items are service-based items, and there you cannot tie a cost to service items. Do inventory items. Inventory items? I'm sorry, you're still breaking up on me. If, if you do inventory or non-inventory items, you can have, I believe it's a, a cost if you do an inventory part. Cost. Okay. I'll play with that then. Great, thanks. Um, 
about uh, on some of the tasks that you showed me last week, um, we were talking about there's a box that says web comment. What is that box for? If we make a comment in there, where does that go? Uh, that is to display comments from the customer portal. Okay. So you can create a quote, send it to your customer's portal. They could log in, see the quote, and they can add a comment to it, which you could then see it in the desktop. Okay. Okay. Um, so the last thing I had, Michael, is cut questions about that customer portal. Is there a time we could get you again to go over? I've been trying to mess with it finally. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll have uh, one of our guys give you a call here in just a sec. Um, as soon as the training's done, and uh, he can help get you on my calendar for next week. That'd be perfect. If you could do that and then send me that template, I'd appreciate it. Not a problem. Thank you, Michael. All right, Deborah. I think you had a um, option. I've unmuted you, and uh, I see that you want to go ahead and ask that. Yeah, I'm actually here with Eric. Also, we're together, so oh, okay. The first question that he can ask the other, so we're uh, we're on the same phone. Okay. So um, we are going to be using mostly the um, memorize transactions for all of our monthly contracts that we do. And of course, then we're going to have the root ticket stuff. That's where we'll enter anything to do with supplies. And I, I realize, or at least I know by watching the videos, that I'll take my memorized transactions and make that into a root ticket and then have everything bill all together at the end of the month. And I understand that. I think it works perfectly. My only question is that we have um, a customer that we have about 15 or 16 locations for them. And they want a separate invoice every month for supplies. So can, I don't think I can make a memorized transaction with a zero balance, or, or I shouldn't say I don't think what if I can do. Maybe ask you how would I how would I get around that? Do I have to keep them as a memorized transaction in QuickBooks? Just create. That I would. Yeah, yeah, I would keep them as a memorized transaction in QuickBooks. That way, you get that one invoice, and then you just use the route tickets for supplies to combine and create that second invoice uh, separately. That'd be a great way to do it. I mean, I don't follow that. So the memorized, the memorized transaction will have the monthly contract on it. Oh, and then the the route. I understand. Okay, I got it. <laughs> I had to say it again in my mind. Okay, that's great. That will work perfectly. And Eric, you want to? The other, the other quick thing we had was, can you? We're new, obviously, to the service program, and can you take us from, like, someone calls in for us to, you know, do like an extra billable, uh, you know, sales order? Can you take us from the call to, you know, generating the sales order, like to completion? Can you just walk us through that? Certainly. Uh, the way the service program handles uh, is, I would think, to handle a. Uh, kind of a one-time service or extra service would be greatly or easily managed through a task. And that's basically a worker, so like this, as soon as the phone rings, hit task entry, plus sign, and then could select the customer. And task types can be definable for the different type of, of job I'm doing. Maybe it's service call, follow up, or you know, extra service, something like that. Those all come from QuickBook. No, these task types you set up within the service program. This list should be blank unless you've created something already, and you can just create them just by typing in here. Oh, great! And it'll add it. It'll give you a pop up. Do you want to add it now? Hit yes. Then you could describe what the customer is requesting. Something like that. 
We then, over here on our due date, this is where we can actually kind of schedule it when we want it to show up. We just say for today, we can assign it to one of the techs, put our start time and end time, and hit close, and that, that will actually save that task. And here it is in yellow. Okay. Now, to close this out, when the job is done, you can open the task again. You would put in a resolution. And this would be just kind of your closing notes, what you did. And then for being billable, I can just hit invoice. So, what, so hold on, before you do that, what's the difference between invoicing it or it says create sales order? Uh, creating a sales order will actually just create a sales order in QuickBooks. Um, there's no history generated, it doesn't close the task, it creates an open sales order. The way I've seen 99% of our customers use the program is actually invoice and it creates an invoice in QuickBooks for the customer. Um, but that's okay if you take care of it that day. If it's something that's going to be upcoming for the week or something, generally what we do now is create the sales order, and then from the sales order we bill it at that point from QuickBooks. Wouldn't that give us a better tracking method of, so in other words, once we do this, if we want to find out what work we've done in the past, this is just going to be information on the customer stream the way that it is now? Yeah, the service program would then would, what you want to try to do is eliminate using QuickBooks for kind of what you've been doing is you didn't have a software managed scheduling and service, so you're using an accounting program to do that and have created a workaround that, I mean, it does work. You get a, a tracking of your sales order in QuickBooks is kind of like what the service okay. pro task is. So now you can completely separate your AR process from the actual scheduling and billing side. So the service program will start holding all your service history. Um, and then the QuickBooks, you're just managing invoicing and billing. And basically, once the invoice is in QuickBooks, you accept and receive the payments. You can do any payables, stuff like that. So once the person uh, completes this job and creates an invoice, they don't have to put the pricing on it. The person doing the billing can actually put the pricing on it once it's in QuickBooks. Uh, you could do it either or. Um, I recommend is you know someone in the office could mark this as complete and hit invoice, and go to invoice in the service program. That invoice that we just press is what physically gets it off our task list and marks it as complete. It stays as an open invoice in the service program until someone hits post the QuickBooks. So what you do as a kind of a procedure, you go to the open invoice list. Someone could be in charge of then going in, putting in the actual dollar amounts, oh, perfect. putting in oh, labor, so we, putting we in basically don't need it anymore in QuickBooks. Yeah, you could just give it. And then let's say someone puts in the stuff for billing and could mark it as approved. That way you know kind of what's ready to be invoiced versus what's not. Perfect. And then when you want to invoice it, you just hit post to QuickBooks. So at the time that the dispatcher closes it, he could assign it to the billing person at that point, couldn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you assign? Now, here's how, how the, is it assigned? Right here, he could then assign it to the person responsible for billing on that invoice. But anything that your person responsible for billing would just be kind of sitting on this invoice list this open this list, because once it goes to QuickBooks, it's off the screen. So anything pending on this list is basically considered ready to be, uh, you know, edited, if you will. And once you have sent that invoice to QuickBooks, it checks off that it's posted QuickBooks. Now if we could go to the customer's history, if you need to find out kind of what, what we've done, yeah. this is where you can pull up running history. You would see right here you've had completed task, the date of the last invoice, but if we go to the notes tab, here we could see we had an extra service, it was invoiced, here's all the notes from it. For everything for every customer. Perfect. You could double click that order number to get back to the work order to see the full information. 
and we'd even have invoicing history of here's that invoice was posted to QuickBooks and the dollar amount. And of course, you would have that same invoice for that customer with QuickBooks. Awesome. Great. Is there any compatible field in QuickBooks for the parent company? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the parent company and job site is directly for QuickBooks. If you look at this demo company I'm using, I have a customer in QuickBooks at the Forgets company, and they've got two sub accounts or different locations. In the service program, this is what we call the parent. These would be the different loads. If I want to add a, if you have a customer that has multiple locations, you just have to click on their name, go to a new customer and job, and click add job. Does that give you the ability to give them? Is, I'm sorry, go ahead. Do they have to have the same account number as the parent, or you can give it a separate account number? Under payment settings. You can have an individual account number for it. Okay. Great. It's basically treated as a set customer. So if you look at revenue, you're going to see it was for that particular location. So you see that the job site is the one that I have the balance. But if you click on the parent company, you would see the balance and invoices for all of the sub accounts. So it works real well to kind of spot revenue and see it broken down per location. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That's a question. That's it, right? That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Jean, did you have another question? Uh, yeah. I have uh, well, two questions. One, on the re when you go into the rentals, if you go into the rental screen, and you finish a rental, let's say for some reason you finish a rental and you you didn't bill them or something, but where do we look at those rental screens later? I know that you get under billing, you can see, bill, you know, billing history of billing transactions. You can go to rental inventory transactions. Mm -hmm. This is everything that the center system is maybe closed out. Okay, and then I can double click and look at them there then. Okay, if I need to. You can just look at the voice and either post it to QuickBook or do whatever you need. And it tells me everything it did and how it got returned and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. All righty. And then I'm working on a delivery ticket template. So if you go back mm -hmm. to the rental screen, um, and you showed me before over here in Word, Word template. Because I can't get it to go to the web ones, but um, go to the, the number ten. This is ten dot up there. The rental agreement, yeah. And it isn't filling in um, all of the data that it, it should. If you open that up, go ahead and open it. First thing. So the data isn't coming in, like the monthly price and the all that stuff. I need the field code so I can make that go in there because it's not working. Yeah, so the field codes, if you go to, um, I believe, our online help, we should have, I think, the full list of transaction. I'm not mistaken. I thought we had a, the list in there. We have tasks, quotes. I don't know. I'll send you a to-do head of all the field names and marks. That makes it easy. Yeah, that'd be great. Just send me the field codes and I can try to get that in there. Okay, I'll do that as well. Just, I do have I it. Just a little quick reminder how to stick them in. So I've got it all set up other than sticking those in there and making them work. So, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. No problem. you have another question, Liz? Yeah, um, you were just with it, um, showing another client that customer lead detail where you put in all the notes <laughs> in regards to um, what happened on the service call and whatnot. I started doing that this week. 
and go to yeah exactly that specific place and when I hit print nothing is there <laughs> well, yeah it only prints what's selected so you have to check off what you print on that far right and then hit print I did that too thinking and apps yeah and it doesn't even look anything at all like that I don't know if maybe that make sure you're in this print button up here and not this top print button okay all right, on, in the actual notes section. It's on the right. You may have to scroll over to the right you know, to see it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, Deanne, I, I am not ignoring you. I did see you have a question here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, it's okay if you keep me muted, though, because our phones ring and there's other people in here on the phones, too. All right, I'm going to try to uh, read through this. She sent it in chat. I don't know if everyone else can see it. I'll, I'll read it out here. Enter toilet routes to the route schedule. I want to make sure you're doing this correctly. Put the last service date and the route date. I think it's the next time. MPP service. Okay. I think I got it. Um, so what you're doing is when set a schedule. You're putting the route date as the customer's service date with their frequency. That way, when you're ready to basically use the system, you can put the route down here. And that's actually going to then take everybody and put them, you can bring them current. So if you had everyone set up like I did on 2.7, their last service date, we then could tell the software to post the route, basically move the routes forward. And then I can just keep doing that and move forward until they're current with whatever date you're starting. The second part of your question here, um, make sure the stop number is correct. Stop is automatically put them in the right order. Um, you have to use our, our integration with MapPoint uh, to be able to map these stops and then you could set the stop or based on the recommendations from MapPoint. So if I want to figure out the order of this route, I have Microsoft MapPoint installed. I could pick some two and assign date, what's that, 214, and then I could hit map. What this is going to do is send it to Microsoft map point, plot out the stops on the actual map, and then I could optimize it. So here, plot it out, wrap. I can go to the outlander, I could hit optimize. Then this is my new stop order, so it's my number only in the service program. That's how I can make sure it stays in the right order. And will you just send me a little message in chat and answer both correctly? Go ahead, Dan. I'm waiting for Dan to send me a message in chat. Uh, Jeannie, did you have another question? Uh, yeah, I have one more question. When it comes to routes, um, I didn't know if you could show me how you actually print out. Um, can you print out the route sheet from uh, MapPoint, like that list? Can you print it? I I assume so. Um, I think I can hit printer right up here. Yeah, it's printing right I don't right want the map. But I don't want the directions. I just want the print of that thing on the left. When I try to print, it prints the map and everything else. And I don't know. To... If I go to file print, I said I want um, you know to strip the maps out. I want drive directions only, or the turn by turn maps. You do driving. Make sure you do driving directions only and uncheck include overview map. 
You can then set a title of the print. I really don't even want the driving directions. I just want the list on the left. Is there a way to get the list on the left or no? No, I don't think you can just print the list on the left. Okay. I think you'd have to print uh, just at least the directions. What if you get the addresses of like the restaurants and stuff that are on that route? Can you print that out somehow? Okay, I'm st like if you're for lead generation, you said you. For lead generation, oh. you said that you can get like different businesses in the area, mm -hmm. and so you, how do you print that out, or can you? Or that I go to there? categories and I select all my places and I tell it to search within ten miles of my entire route. Right. The only way I can get on here is by double click to get, get their contact information. Just double click each one. Okay. There's not a way to get a print out of that then. Mm -hmm. No, and that can print my map, and it would have all these little bubbles on there with their contact information. Oh, you could print it that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I needed to understand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you can. Uh, Deborah brought up a good point. Um, I, you can kind of copy and paste if you know how to do like a screen capture in Word. Um, I think maybe a good option. If you open up a new Word doc and you can, you know, do a screen capture of one of the buttons on the toolbar, where you can then pick this screen and get a direct printout or capture it that way, possibly. Um, let's see here. And yes, Dan, the longitude and latitude will override any mapping in the service program. You can enter the longitude and latitude in the custom detail in here. Even if the customer has an address or a blank address, as long as that's entered, it will override it. All right, that does take us right to our uh, right about to our hour mark. This is a great Q and A class. I have recorded this whole thing. I will put it up, uh, make it available, probably beginning of next week. I appreciate everyone uh, coming out. I hope we get uh, more turnouts like this. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week.